Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video I'm going to talk about the different things that universities should have taught all engineers. So let's get started. All right, so I just wanted to go over basically from my own experience and what I've also seen um, as I've been working full time. Um, I've been working full time for almost a year now, but since then I've also learned so much about computer engineering and just engineering in general. So these are just some things that I've noticed that I really, really think engineers should have learned during their undergraduate degree. The first thing is all engineering students, or at least computer and electrical engineering students, should be taking communication courses, or at least one communication course. They should be able to communicate with others because that is such key <laughs> with, uh, with anything, really, and especially with engineers, because I know that um, when you're majoring in engineering, a lot of focus is on the work, uh, such as the math work, the computations, the programming. Um, a lot of emphasis is focused on you know the engineering part which makes sense you're a computer engineer you're an electrical engineer but you also got to take into account the communications part the you know behavioral part psychology you got to be able to communicate with others around you because you're working with others you're working in a group or at the very least you have a manager who's there to guide you and and make sure that you're you know progressing and doing well in your work and um, showing results so all of that involves human interaction. When I started working full time, um, I realized that a lot of the time, you know, we go into these meetings and we have to explain something that we're working on or we have to explain a particular uh, software that we're programming or uh, give a presentation on the results that we found. And all of that involves being able to communicate what exactly you're doing. So you gotta know what you're doing and also be able to, you know, put it to words so that other people understand what you're saying and help each other out if we are struggling with anything. So with all of that being said, it's very important to take a communications class. So if there's an elective that you can take as an undergraduate student, I would highly suggest taking a communications course because you will be using that. But that's the first thing. The second thing is universities should require engineers or at the very least suggest engineers and um, encourage engineers to take public speaking courses. You will need to present that information either in a, you know, even if it's in a PowerPoint, you'll still have to get up there or even um, if you're working remotely, you'll still have to go online and explain everything to these people and so all of that involves being able to have that courage and, and and being able to be comfortable in that environment to to actually give the right information and to be able to you know answer questions when people have them um, know what you're talking about beforehand uh, be prepared for these presentations know what to be prepared for you have to know who you're talking to um, if I'm presenting in front of a bunch of other engineers I could use a lot of jargon um, and jargon I mean like the language that other engineers understand because they're doing either the same work you're doing or they've done the same work or they've taken the same classes you've taken so they understand what you're talking about but if you're talking to a group of people who don't know anything like you're like a bunch of users you have a software program and then you have these users who are just seeing the front end of that program you don't want to go into detail about like the database or where the data is being pulled from or the type of database you're using they don't want to know any anything about that they want to just know that okay if i press this button what happens so um, a lot of that has to do with being able to know who your audience is and i first started there was a couple of times where i had to present something that i was working on and i i prepared at least that's what i thought i did but it turns out that it I wasn't prepared at all because I just didn't know what they were asking but I did have like all the slides complete because I knew that's what you had to do you had to make sure all that information is there um, but again people didn't really understand what I was saying because my audience were those who didn't do the work that I was doing so then I had to just kind of explain it in very general terms but I didn't I went into too much detail in certain areas and it just ended up becoming very boring and I lost a lot of I think I lost a lot of their interests. I was also extremely, extremely nervous and stressed beforehand. I spent a lot of time just thinking about what to say, how to say it while I was giving the presentation. And there were times where I would, you know, stutter or uh, say a lot of us <laughs> like I'm doing right now, but a lot of us and just 
kind of short sentences, not very good transitions. And because of all that, it really hurts the overall presentation. It's, it's, it's just more interesting to see a presentation that has, you know, some details in there, but you really just want to see the results ultimately. Um, and it pulls you in. That's a good presentation. So that's it. I think you should take a public speaking class. Another thing that I think universities should at least suggest engineers to do is to take a psychology course. Um, but this is probably more of a suggestion than a requirement because uh, like I was saying with the public speaking and the communication, you have to know your audience, you have to understand who you're talking to and that all involves psychology. Um, as well as even if it's a small group of people, you have to know who these people are, uh, what are they interested in and why are they interested in that and then you can focus on those different areas that you're presenting your work on. And, being able to understand how they think because I honestly think that difference between a good performing engineer and a bad performing engineer is how you present yourself. I mean, you not only want to be good at engineering, yes, in your job and do the work correctly and efficiently, but you also want to be nice and presentable. You don't want to be a complainer. You don't want to be um, a, an employee who, who just you know, comes in looking like they hate their lives or they don't want to be there or they're just very unenthusiastic. You want to be more enthusiastic with your job and what you're doing and what you're working on. Um, and that's all part of the human psychology people like those kind of people who are more out there, more enthusiastic and nicer and they seem like they actually want to be there. It's just more of like an openness that they have to them and so that just attracts other people and you'll be seen as a better engineer overall and thus you'll be able to either get a raise or keep your job. So um, honestly, I think psychology is probably one of those classes that um, I, I think everyone could just learn online. You don't really have to take a class, but I think it's encouraged to at least, you know, go out of your way to understand um, how to interact with people and what makes them, you know, tick or not tick depending on the person and what they want to do and what, what um, how to present yourself in a better way. So that's that one. And the last thing is probably something that all students should know, um, even in high school, just not even just engineers, just all students is uh, finance, being able to manage your money, being able to know how to not only manage your money, but to invest what that even means really. And the different ways you could save your money, uh, the different options you could take with your money, like how to invest it, where to invest it. Um, if you invested in this particular account, what can you do with that particular account? Um, uh, the different options that are available to you when you do invest your money and save it, uh, how your life could dramatically change if you save your money, and all of that is very important because when you're an engineer and you start working, not even just an engineer, but when you start working full time and you understand the value of a dollar and understand how how much time you know you lose from this job, this full time job, you 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 really start to see that, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm spending so much time on this job and I don't need to do that. If I just save and invest, I can spend my time to do what I want. And that's where I think that all students, anyone who is still in school should be learning, even if it's just investing, even if it's just saving, anything is better than nothing. When I was working as an intern, I didn't really understand the value of a dollar. I was like, okay, cool. Um, I'm actually getting paid to do work. Whereas before I was paying to do the work because I was a student and I had never worked before. So um, it was really bizarre and cool and new. And I'm like, oh sweet, I'm getting paid to actually do something. Uh, it's not the other way around. That was nice at first, but then I realized uh, as I started to actually work full time, I realized how much time was being taken away from me. I'm like, okay, this is not worth that money. Doing all this work is not worth that money. Even as a college student or a high school student, I did not spend not only 40 hours on doing their home, the homework, but also like another 20 hours just getting ready for that next week. It was a huge wake up call for me and I really came to terms with the fact that I am spending basically my whole life on this job. Um, any time that I have that's free goes to the job. And I just realized that if I would have just known about investing or financing or saving, I would have been so much better off. I probably would have started working maybe even, I don't know, a couple hours a week as a high schooler, saving the money, saving everything I could. So I didn't have to work as long when I started working full time. Um, but that's what I mean. So if I would have known that, I probably would have started sooner, but I didn't. So it just appalls me that universities, even high schools, uh, and middle schools, they don't even 
address that topic. They don't even have it as an elective, I think. Uh, I think the only time is maybe senior year of high school is where you actually have the option of taking a finance course. Uh, so it's just, it's just ridiculous, honestly. A lot of headache and uh, anxiety and stress could be prevented if everyone knew how to manage their money, how to save it, and how to invest it. So I think that that's a very, very important class and that should be a requirement for everyone. That is basically a short list on the things that I've noticed since becoming a full-time engineer that universities should teach uh, undergraduate engineering students and it should be a requirement for them. I don't know if this will ever actually happen. It probably won't because the courses are just rigorous and, and a lot of the times engineers need to learn you know the engineering material but uh, if you're a engineering student right now and you're whatever grade you're in freshman sophomore junior senior and you have the option of taking an elective um, I think you should either take an elective in communications public speaking or personal finance all of those I think are very very important and then the psychology one I would just kind of like I said recommend uh, just be aware of human interactions and maybe do some Google searches on psychology and kind of learn information online that way because I think there's a lot of information about psychology that you could just Google and you don't need to take a class on that. But those three I think are very, very important and I think those are the courses that you should take if you have the option of taking an elective. Um, if you don't, uh, Google. <laughs> um, find as much information as you can online um, and make sure it's legitimate information, make sure it's coming from a legitimate source. So um, with that being said, I hope you guys all do well and just be aware that you may not be doing a lot of presentation or talking as a student, but when you're an engineer, expect to do a lot of presentations and have PowerPoint slides and being able to communicate what you're working on and everything like that. That's very, very important. So yeah, I hope you guys liked this video and if you guys found it helpful and useful, um, please like, subscribe, and if there's anything else that you want me to go over about this, then please also let me know in the comment section down below and thanks for watching. Bye.